Hi, my name is Michiel Frankfurt, and today I will be showcasing SSGI. In this video, we will take a look at the more advanced features uh, that it has. Uh, yeah, if you're more curious about the basics of SSGI, there is another video available online. That's a basic qu uh, quick setup tutorial video. Um, I would advise to watch that first before we head in here, uh, because a lot of the, the core concepts have already been uh, tackled in that video. All right. The asset has been imported and I have added the SSGI feature to the currently active renderer. In this case, that's the ultra quality renderer. I've changed a few settings to make it work well for this project. So let's talk about this project. As mentioned, it's Blitz GT. It's a race game by Little Chicken and it already has beautiful light maps. So we don't need to focus much on the environment as such. As you can tell here, when I fly around, uh, yeah, it already looks pretty good. And if I disable SSGI, although you're missing a little bit of a contrast, which is an artistic choice, of course, uh, in general, the, the lighting works really well. And uh, yeah, the light maps do what they need to do. Um, you can still use SSGI to further enhance everything. So in this case, you can tell there's a bit more contrast to it, uh, more contact shadows here on the floor. So in general, it probably will uh, boost the, the visual fidelity quite a bit, uh, but this video I'm really going to focus on the uh, the vehicles here. Right, as mentioned, this scene already has beautiful GI baked into it using the bakery. Um, to make sure that the stacking of the GI is not too much, not you know overdoing it, let's make sure that we uh, tweak a few settings to uh, to cancel out a few effects. Uh, first, let's select the uh, the volume again, the post processing volume, and let's have a look at the uh, SSGI fallbacks that we are using. The fallback uh, uses reflection probes. In this scene, there are multiple reflection probes already lined across the, the track. Because the environment's already lit using light maps, we don't really need it. So we can just turn it off or set it to a very low value. First thing I need to do is I want to make sure that these panels here in the background emit light. The, the one problem that we have with uh, light probes is that they don't support dynamically changing uh, light panels, right? So there are two ways to improve the um, the emission of this panel. Uh, of course, you could just select it and head over and drastically uh, change the um, you know the the intensity of the of the panel. But then Bloom kicks in and it looks super bright. It doesn't look nice at all. So yes, you can do it this way, and it works, as you can tell, especially when you toggle it on and off, you can clearly see the difference, um, but it's not nice. So let's let's use one of the first more advanced features here, and it's called the SSGI Override. So the cool thing is I could just add it to the, the prefab, save that, and then, uh, yeah, we'll come back to the scene. So I'm going to open up the prefab, go to the quad, and here I'm going to add a component called the SSGI Object. Um, all right, well, you can't tell, of course, in the prefab view, but uh, there are a lot of overrides here, and I, in this video, we will go over a few of them and, uh, yeah, explain them in a bit more detail. In this case, I'm going to override the uh, emit intensity and set it to 5 and head back to the scene view. Um, let's select the, the light capture here. Here you can see as well that the, uh, that the panels actually are emitting a lot of light. If I uh, disable the override, you can tell the difference as well. So the override now is emitting more light into the scene. That's that's brilliant, that's cool. Um, but as mentioned, the scene already has the light maps. So that's why the floor looks very bright, but the car doesn't. The car is a dynamic object. It's not light baked. It doesn't have any uh, uh, light probes in this scene. Um, so yeah, we might want to select this car and boost it individually. Let's set that up. I'm going to add the uh, SSGI object here. And um, not, instead of using the emit intensity, this time we're going to change the light receive intensity. So I'm going to boost it by a factor of three. And already you can tell the difference here. See, it's way, way more bright. And all of a sudden the panel in the background nicely illuminates the, uh, the object. Let's do a proper shadow setup. You might have seen that the uh, light and shadows are flickering a little bit. That's because in this 
uh, area. There's a lot of shadows happening, and we might want to adjust some uh, some noise filtering settings to uh, to make sure that this looks better. All right, so the car has been added to the thickness layer. We now uh, are able to have light pass behind the vehicle as it should. Um, let's focus on the floor here. As you can tell, there are some artifacts on the floor, and we probably want to denoise uh, those artifacts. So if you head over to the Raymart settings, um, you can ha you can play with these sliders a little bit and uh, to see what it does. We're going to look at the surface depth bias. The bias is basically telling us um, how much uh, distance do we need to uh, cover before it's considered a Raymart block, right? So if I set it to zero, if the distance is zero, then basically every object that it encounters is considered uh, a Raymart hit, including its neighboring pixel or even its own pixel. So we need to have a little bit of a, a bias that says, okay, if you've passed this threshold from there on out, you can be considered it as a Raymart hit. Let's increase that. And with it, we can really uh, strip out a lot of these artifacts. So I think a nice value of 0.3 for this scene works well. And already you can tell that the floor is much cleaner and much nicer. If you now go to full screen, I think the floor looks nice. No more flickering, no more weird artifacts. But we also don't really see a shadow from the car anymore. And this has nothing to do with the denoising. It has to do with the fact that we assign it to the, um, to the thickness layer. So how come that the shadows from the car are no longer visible? Well, if we look at the thickness mask, we do need to tell the renderer how thick the objects are. However, these body panels are single-sided. So the thickness mask uh, needs the object to be double-sided. Okay, that's not great because this, this car isn't single, so is single-sided, so how do we fix it? Well, we already have the, uh, the SSGI object override in place. And we can just add a little bit of thickness to it. That's the Raymarch additional thickness. And as we increase it, you can tell that the, the thickness mask intensifies as well. So you can virtually make it thicker. And if we then go and uh, look at the, uh, the shadows, you can also tell that the shadows come back in. So I think an additional thickness of 1.5 in this case it's fine, you can, especially in the debug view, you can see a lot of shadows happening. However, I think from an artistic point of view, uh, it's great that the shadows are here, but we also want to make sure that they're you know, more prominent in the scene view. And let's head over to the, to the volume again. And in this case, let's just intensify the shadows. Ooh, <laughs> that was a bit much. So the wheels are quite bright. You want them to shine some light on the floor as well. Unfortunately, as you might have seen before, tiny objects are difficult to find in uh, screen space. And this could cause flickering uh, or simply, you know, an inconsistent result in terms of light emission. So what if we could tell the renderer somehow, like, hey, this is a small object, but it's still very important and should emit a lot of light. Well, the easiest way to tell the renderer of that is by simply making the object bigger, which you cannot do because it will look weird in game. Uh, but what if we can make it bigger, but only virtual to the renderer? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Yeah, I know it looks weird, but it does the, the trick really well. Uh, it uses in this case, either the normals to expand it or the uh, local position. And I'm only scaling it in the, the Y and the Z axis because I already knew that those would work really well. well. So all of a the sudden, these rims emit way more light, not because they are brighter, but simply because virtually they are bigger. And that, of course, works better from the distance as well. On top of that, we can still, you know, uh, make them way more bright. But uh, yeah, I think this is pretty perfect. Cool, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. Please check out my next video in which we will take a look at the factory track and use some uh, light strips to, uh, to light the scene there. Um, big thanks to Little Chicken for allowing me to use this asset. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.